Hey everybody, it's Kristen Merlin, and I'm a singer-songwriter from Boston, and I'm rocking CRS 2015. And you dug yourself out of the snow to get ah, here. Eight feet of snow we dug out of, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> the music you brought here was the Boomerang EP. Yes. And I'd like to hear about the themes that you were exploring, if any, um, things that you were... It, was there a theme to that record? That it was kind of just uh, me and my producer, Corey Britz, sitting down and figuring out. I, we, I had a plethora of songs that I was going to bring to the table. And uh, we kind of just wanted to take a day, the first day I got out there in L.A., and sort through which songs we fe felt would go best together and also showcase me as an artist, as this being my first original uh, release of music. Um, so I was excited about you know giving the fans something of mine and I wanted to make sure that they kind of got the whole gist of what I'm about so there's the soft side and then there's the more upbeat and fun and there's kind of the more serious songs uh, and then Boomerang came along and that's actually one of Corey's songs and so we we're kind of going through songs and he was to, you know oh this is my project I worked on this and I did this and show me different things so he ended up pulling up this song and he's like oh it's a really pretty song and then skipped over it I said well are you gonna play it for me we, he's like, you want to hear it? I said, absolutely, I want to hear it. He can just tell me it's a really beautiful song and then just go on to the next. So he starts playing the song, and um, it was beautiful. It was just a, a vocal and piano that started out, and just that in and of itself caught me, you know, caught my attention. And then listening to the lyrics, it really spoke to me. So I was like, it's a really cool song. I really like it. Went home and kept playing over in my head. Woke up the next morning. I was still singing it. So I went into the studio. I said, Corey, I have to cut this song. And uh, he had never thought of it going country before because they've tried the pop route and they tried, you know, just a singer-songwriter kind of style. And so then we, we made a country and uh, he was excited about it. So, and I was pumped. It was like, became one of my new favorite songs. Yeah, that's cool. Definitely. So the, the theme of the record is who is Krista Merlin? Yeah, Almost. it was kind of just, I want to, you know, kind of present myself to, to my fans and new fans too. And so mm -hmm. they can kind of get a gist of what they're in for for the full, uh, full length album. Which of those categories of songs that you just mentioned come the most natural to you? Well, I struggled actually with who am I and what am I going to present as and, you know, kind of what genre am I going down because, you know, previous to The Voice I was doing cover stuff and I would do everything, you know, we had Johnny Cash, Eminem, Whitney Houston, Pink, um, you, you name it, I did it, Sugarland. So it was kind of, I did a little of everything and then The Voice really honed in on like, all right, let's, let's go country. And so the more I went through the show, the more you look into yourself and find yourself and who are you as an artist and where do you sit best. And uh, then thinking back, I'm like, you know, I've always lent myself well to country uh, vocally and whatnot. So that's kind of where everything ended up going into. And then once I started doing that, writing became a little easier to like write in that kind of style or uh, performing just felt a little easier, more comfortable that way. So... Um, but, you know, I was looking into stuff like singer-songwriter, and I was like, I think I'm a little more edgy than singer-songwriter. Um, and then uh, country, I was like, well, I'm not your typical country gal, but I, I'm, I sure can make it work, so let's make this happen. And I think it's cool because it's new, it's fresh, I think it's, it's something different, and I think it's something that everyone's ready for. As I mentioned before, I, you know, obviously I don't watch the show, so I don't know if, the, if you got any comments about that. But even if it's like, you know, off-camera stuff, what do you remember them telling you? What was it that they were seeing in you that made it natural for you to be country that you then realized, like, hey, they were right? I think stylistically, um, things that I do um, when I sing, I kind of like this break in my voice or this kind of scoop that I'll do all the time. And so it just kind of fell into that country style. Um, and, and I know that I'm not like a, a pop star, you know. I, I, I love pop radio and I love all this, those songs, but I knew that that's not, as much as I like listening to it and I like singing it, I know, for cover shows, I didn't feel like that quite was who I was. Yeah. For future projects, because there are writers who really sort of explore things, they use their music to, to explore their lives, is that something you notice yourself doing as you write material? I think every time you get into a writing session or you, you know, I sit down and write something different, for me it was more of an outlet. You know, I, I would go through something hard or whatever and so then I was just like, right, you know, let's sit down and write about it. And, uh, and now as things evolve, it's kind of like, well, now I just want to write something that, that everyone's going to like or whatever. So there's different things you sit down and write for different reasons or um, some things just therapeutic and some things it's like you want to make a hit. But it's, it's nifty how you kind of change you switch gears as you go through things. Yeah. 
A comment that I pulled out of the bio that was from the show still was a, they commented on your stage presence and performance. How did you cultivate that strong presence on stage? Uh, it's, I think it's just always been in me. I'm always like a goof and I like to ham it up or you know, I just like to have fun and interact with people. And uh, so the more I did shows at home and played in the bars, the more comfortable I got always you know being up in front of someone and get me on a stage good luck getting me off you know because I just like I love doing that um, but so I, then I had bands back me and so the more I got out from behind you know my guitar and the, the mic stand the easier it was for me to kind of maneuver around where whatever venue I was at and it, that became really fun for me especially when the audience knew you know we get to interact with her and so then they wanted to come back for that they felt part of the show and that's what I really like about it I love that you know fans feel like they're they're part of what I'm doing yeah. and um, Club Passim that's the club I couldn't remember oh. in Boston <laughs> a couple of days ago <laughs> got it <laughs> I just I thought remember I knew I would do this right I recently heard Rose, an interview with Roseanne Cash and she commented in that on all the different situations in which she saw her dad the only place where she really saw the true him was on stage that's what people say about me is that something that you relate to for to sure well? um and it's funny because sometimes in in scenes that i don't really know a lot of people i can kind of be quiet and quiet and shy but then get me on a stage and i'm like wow let's have fun you'll never know like i didn't know a soul in the room you know yeah but i do feel home on stage i feel comfortable on stage i feel like i can really be me and shine and and uh just have fun with it and let people into my world which is kind of scary sometimes you know it's mm -hmm, a yeah you're very vulnerable when you're up there especially singing your own stuff um, but it's really awesome when you have great feedback and, and great interaction what is it about that the stage brings out in you that the rest of the world doesn't why is it that the stage gets you all riled up well you know we've talked before you're you know this quiet nice <laughs> person <laughs> Um, so I see what they mean, that, that, that duality that is in your personality. What is it that's, that's missing from the rest of the world that you do find on stage? I think it's being able to be up there and shine with, with my, the talent that you know, I've been blessed with, thankfully. Um, and I just love it. I don't know. It's, I think it's something about moving people with music. You know, there's always some way that you reach somebody. And I, that's the craziest thing for me after the show was all the, the emails or interactions with people I had after and the stories that they would tell me about even just the gatherings that they had for the viewing parties that they would have you know that's crazy cool because you have families that never usually got together for anything or you had friends that haven't seen each other in forever that were getting together every Monday and Tuesday to support me and that's just mind-blowing uh, but then I've had stories where people have said, you know, you've been such an inspiration. Now, I've chased my dream, and I never thought I could, but you were just doing what you love to do, and look how it turned out for you. And that's awesome. Me doing something I love doing, not even <coughs> thinking that it's helping anybody else do stuff like that, that's a really good feeling, so. Yeah, and the reaction to the songs themselves, how does that feel when somebody comes up and says, that song moved me for this reason? That's, that's good. It's, Overwhelming sometimes, actually, um, when someone is moved so much by a certain song that you sing, whether it be my own or a cover that I've done. Um, I legit had a fan come up and say, which I'm now good friends with, um, you saved my life. And wow. I said, what? You know, and it was just whatever it was in that moment, whatever she felt from me when I performed that song, changed everything around for her. And uh, that it brought me to tears, quite honestly. Yeah. It was intense. It was something so unexpected. But uh, to think that there's such power in music and that I was the vessel to kind of deliver that, that's amazing. A concept I've been exploring all of this week with other people is, is that idea of, and you already used the word vulnerable, mm -hmm. is the idea of vulnerability, I think, to really be seen, to really step out and let ourselves be seen as we really are. Right. It's really hard, but it's an act of courage. It is, and uh, it's different, you know. It, I've never been one to make an excuse for who I am, you know, and so that's just, it's one more thing of what you're doing. You're, you're putting yourself out there, and your writings are so personal sometimes. Um, so to, to be able to let others into that world is, is a little scary, but it's gratifying when it's well-received, and, uh, and it, some of it makes a lot of difference. Yeah, and does it? how do you guard against letting it hurt you too much if it's not well received well you can't ever really be hurt so much by it. you have to kind of expect the, that side of everything you know never, it's not all 
roses and rainbows. <laughs> but uh, as much as I like to think the world is, it, it, it's okay because not everyone's going to feel the same way. Not everyone's going to be affected in the same manner. And you know, but there's that one person that will, and yeah. that, and that's what makes it worth it. So that when the, when negative comments do come in, just remember the good comments. Yeah, for sure. Because there's always going to be a naysayer somewhere. You know, there's always going to be someone who doesn't quite understand or isn't on the same page and that's okay you know everyone's different for that reason uh, the world would kind of, it'd be boring if it'd everyone very, was the same dull, so <laughs> but uh you just have to you know, not let all that life's too short to be negative honestly mm-hmm. and so you take it and brush it off and keep going and keep smiling so all right a comment again that i saw in the bio was your love for animals True. and i share this love <laughs> i love animals i love hanging out with them what is it about being with animals that that draws you in that you enjoy um for me for like certainly dogs i think and it's um like an unconditional love i don't know it's just there's something about a dog some people it's babies that make them smile and giddy and for me it's a puppy (laughs) so or a dog that's like you know it's still a puppy to me but um i don't know it's just they're they're fun they're loyal they're just always putting a smile on my face anyways yeah. I, I once was asked why is it that you love animals so much and the, the, the response I gave actually kind of surprised me and I thought well, what does that say about me um, because I said well they're real it's true they don't pretend right they don't know how I guess you know they are who they are yeah. and they're gonna have all their quirks and their different you know things that make them unique but uh, I guess if you think about it they wouldn't be like humans where you kind of want to alter things to fit in somewhere or whatever they're just gonna be Although maybe obedience would actually be a form of that, <laughs> you know, because if they want a cookie, they're they're sure gonna sit down real pretty, you know. <laughs> yeah, but I, I, I'm just thinking more like, you know, I go out in nature a lot and uh, taking photos of animals. If you don't respect that you're in their territory, they just leave because you're making noise and they just go somewhere else. True. Um, so I think it was more more thinking about that that I thought if you don't. If you intrude too much, they just leave. Right. You know, they're not going to stay there to get you to like them. Right. <laughs> they're just going to go away. They're like, you know what? I'm out. <laughs> I'll go eat in another tree. Right, right. I've been finishing up with this question, and I've gotten some really cool reactions. Which songs would you put on the soundtrack to your life? Oh, that is intense. Um, and I know it's tough, because as a songwriter, you write your own soundtrack. Right, right. But it's sort of other songs I'm trying that to think of other kind things. of represent you or parts of you. Um, hmm. I don't know. I mean, one of my favorite songs would be uh, Pink's Perfect. I think that's a really cool song. It's just a powerful kind of message. Um, yeah. And I think anything just upbeat, happy, and bubbly, it, you know, just something that's like, it's all good, you know? Like, <laughs> oh, God. You know, I do like that song, but I, I, on the tour, just we, heard we, it too many we times. sang that song to end the show for every show we did on the tour, so I think I'm all happy out. Yeah. <laughs> I've had enough happy right, from. right. But no, I, I just I like things that have meaning. So, and to, and to me, I think life is all about finding meaning and stuff. So, so whichever songs kind of there's a, a million of them that have different meanings that could be relevant at different points in time. So, it's kind of hard to pinpoint a few specific ones. I know it's a tough question. Definitely. But thanks for thanks for playing. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you.